All right, everyone. So we have Ribeye Rach, also known as Rachel Elizabeth, and health coach Jen on with me today. And we're going to talk a little bit about something that no one really talks about. No one knows what the heck it is, but is probably one of, if not the most important tool to heal from gut brain health issues. And I want to bring Rachel on today because she is the poster child of somebody who used this healing modality to heal their gut brain health issues. And I want to start this off, uh, Rachel, in a bit of an unorthodox way. I hope you don't mind me sharing this Instagram <laughs> post of yours. This was Ra Rachel in 2019, and this is Rachel pretty recently, I think in the last few weeks or so. So um, I was just going through the list of chronic illnesses that you had here. Um, I can't even pronounce some of them. Eller -Dan Danlos syndrome, craniocervical instability, dysautonomia, uh, cherry malformation. I don't even know what that is. Chronic, yeah, yeah. chronic Lyme they... disease. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, basically, as you saw in the photo on the left, I when I was 20 years old, I became very sick, and I, after a couple of years, became bed bound and was diagnosed with all sorts of conditions that Scott just mentioned. And I was having all sorts of severe symptoms, pain. I was barely able to walk. I needed assistance to walk. Um, I was having severe neurological symptoms, brain fog. I mean, you name it, I probably had the symptom. Um, and so I was severely, severely ill and going the Western medicine route for years because that's what everyone kind of does. And it wasn't getting me better. I had major neurosurgeries, brain and neurosurgeries, and those didn't get me better. I was at my sickest a year after the surgeries that I had and was being recommended to have more. And at some point I just said, this just doesn't feel right. I, I don't feel like if I continue down this road that I'm going to get better. And I don't even know if I'll survive if I continue going down the Western medicine route. And so eventually I was led into learning about the carnivore diet. I, I started the carnivore diet that definitely brought me significant improvements. I was able to kind of get out of a really severe bed bound phase, put on a little bit of weight and was able to, to do more things, but I was still severely ill. It wasn't enough to do diet. And um, obviously I know how important diet is and how impactful it is, but it wasn't enough to help me to fully recover and heal. And so at that point, that's when I got into brain retraining, nervous system regulation. I know you commonly refer to it as limbic training. And this is something that completely changed my life. And it brought me healing more quickly than changing my diet did. And I think it's something that's really the missing piece for a lot of people that are trying to heal. So what, what is nervous system regulation exactly? Because I know a lot of people are probably sitting here scratching their heads being like, what the hell is she talking about? What the heck is nervous system regulation or limbic training or brain retraining or whatever people want to call it? What is it and how did it heal you? Do you think? Good question. So a lot of times when people are chronically ill, they become stuck in this chronic survival state. And so their nervous system is stuck in survival state or commonly known as fight or flight. And, and that's called the sympathetic nervous system. And we're supposed to be able to go freely between our fight or flight state and our rest and digest state. And when some sort of trauma occurs, whether it's a physiological trauma like a virus, or uh, molds or environmental toxins, or whether it's a psychological trauma, that can cause the nervous system to become stuck in a chronically dysregulated state. And so when you're stuck in fight or flight, any system of your body can be affected because the nervous system is the control center of the body. It governs your cardiovascular system, your endocrine system, your immune system, your digestive system, pretty much everything important that happens in your body is governed by the nervous system. And so when the nervous system is not functioning properly, it can cause very, very severe and real physical chronic illness. And 
So in order for the body to be able to properly heal, we need to learn how to regulate the nervous system. And a way to do that is with something called brain retraining. And with that, essentially what you're doing is you're signaling safety to the brain so that you can get out of that chronic survival state so that your body can go into rest and repair mode so that healing can actually start to take place. And this is something that can be really impactful for people that feel like they've tried all the diets and they've tried all the protocols and nothing is working. It really could likely be because you're stuck in fight or flight and your body needs that nervous system regulation in order to be able to start to heal. Jen? Yeah, that's really, your story is so powerful. I didn't know that you had had brain surgeries and, and everything. That's, wow, that's pretty intense. So yeah, it was wild. Wow. Um, so what, how did you get into brain retraining and what are some of the exercises that you started implementing first? So my first exposure to something in the realm of brain retraining was reading a book by Joe Dispenza called You Are the Placebo. And that book made me very uncomfortable, but I read it anyway. I told myself I would have an open mind. And I had heard a few people online here and there doing certain brain retraining programs and seeing a lot of progress with it. So I thought, you know, I, I'm going to be open minded about this. I'm going to look into it. And so initially I started with the DNRS program, I think about a year and a half ago, almost now. And doing that, I learned kind of a brain retraining uh, toolkits. And what they have you do is visualize yourself healthy and strong for an hour a day. So I spent 60 minutes a day doing visualizations of myself healthy and strong and past and future memories. And the idea with that is that the brain doesn't know the difference between visualization and reality. And so by visualizing yourself happy and healthy, that helps to create new neural pathways in the brain to start to allow for healing. Oh. So um, most people now are so geared towards wanting that magic pill or wanting a quick fix. And uh, so this stuff we know takes mm -hmm. a little bit of time to start seeing results. How long do you think it was before you first started noticing like, hey, this is really doing something for me? I'd say I noticed benefits pretty quickly within the first few weeks. And then after the first couple months, I was seeing really dramatic shifts. And I will say that I had started implementing some of these principles of like starting to believe I could heal and letting go of limiting beliefs and, and kind of telling myself that I was safe and, and healing before I started, you know, the intensive brain retraining. But I, within the first three weeks of doing DNRS, I was able to walk to my mailbox for the first time. And then I think it was four weeks, I walked a mile for the first time in over five years. And so it was, it was huge for me. It was just like the most impactful thing for my healing. And um, yeah, I, it's also been one of the hardest things that I've done for my healing. It takes a lot of effort. It takes consistency. It takes time. And it's just, it's difficult. There's nothing about healing that's easy. And I think people want an easy way out, like you said, but there just isn't one. And for me, even doing a diet like the carnivore diet, that was a lot easier than mm -hmm. doing this brain retraining stuff because it was just what I ate. I didn't care that much about that. And I wanted the food to just be like the, be the answer and be the only thing I had to do, but it wasn't. And, and this stuff can be hard. You know, you're facing past traumas, you're processing repressed emotions, you're having to consistently show up every day to do the things that are going to help you to heal. And that just isn't easy. So, and I feel like also you have to really, um, prioritize and, um, prioritize your own emotional health which I feel like is hard for a lot of us because we we tend to not want to take care of ourselves and love ourselves in that emotional way. You know, we're 
we're geared towards helping other people maybe, or um, constantly being engaged or have this negative self relationship uh, where it's a lot easier to rag on yourself and tell yourself that you're failing or that you're never going to heal or never going to get better for some reason that's right. easier for our ego, especially when our limbic system is not operating at, you know, in, in balance or in harmony, right? Because from my yeah. understanding, if your nervous system is in dysregulation, that that's a big part of that is your emotional state. And mm -hmm. so if you're stuck in fight, flight, or freeze, then my understanding is your emotions are not going to be a hundred percent positive. A lot of times they're going to be kind of gearing towards that negative mindset. So it's very hard to really love yourself enough to be willing to dig through, you know, your traumas and, and really face some of the issues that you might have going on with yourself in your own relationship. Did you find that to be true? Definitely. Yeah. I actually, before I started brain retraining, I, I almost didn't think that it would benefit me because I, I felt like in general, I was a pretty positive person. Um, but when I did start the retraining, I realized I had a lot of patterns of grief of just the things that I had lost due to illness and lots of, yeah, repressed traumas and, and that sort of thing. And so I think, you know, a lot of times people think that it's just a mindset thing, but it's so much more than that. It's something that happens subconsciously. And when your nervous system becomes stuck in that survival state, it's, it's, un, it's subconscious. It's something that you, your body is actually doing to, in effort to try to protect you. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's something that I think was important for me to realize. And yeah, I guess just that, you know, your, your physical health and your emotional health are, they can't be separated. Mm -hmm. they Absolutely. Are... Yeah. And I, think I always, I always tell people, if you have a gut injury, you're going to have a brain injury and vice versa. Right. And I think a lot of people it's, it's lost on them, the mechanism as to how, you know, your nervous system constantly in that state of fight or flight and upregulated, how much that has an impact on all the functions of your body, right. Oh. On dig digestion, especially right. You're your vagus nerve is something people often talk about in the limbic space as well and how yeah. that completely becomes impaired doesn't function properly mm -hmm. and how that plays such a major role in your digestion your motility you know a lot of other things so yeah. um, and i think it's it's important to remember that brain rewiring is so much more than positive thinking and yes. it, it's not, so much more than meditation like i tried meditation many times mm -hmm. when I was very sick. And while I found it like kind of relaxing and stuff, it, it didn't make me better. And right. for some people it might, but like for me, it, it just wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. I, I was too, too sick to have that be enough. And so I think a lot of times when people hear brain retraining and they're really sick, it almost, they almost feel offended by it. It's like, well, I have a real illness mm -hmm. and, you know, I can brain rewire myself out of that. And it's just sad that that's the assumption because it does nervous system dysregulation does cause serious physical illness. And I personally am under the impression that it is at the root of pretty much every type of chronic disease. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's nothing to, it, it, nobody chooses to be sick, right? It's not your fault, but we can choose to start to heal and, and recover and, a lot of times nervous system regulation can really be that missing key. Yeah. I always say that stress is, is like the biggest toxin, whether it's subconscious or on a conscious level, having that underlying stress, having that underlying trauma eating away at you is the worst toxin. I, I really think in, in someone's life and it, it really just makes it impossible to heal. And when you brought up the concept a brain retraining to me in a way that was so simplistic. And when we did our interview a year ago, I'm going to link that in the description, sorry for the plug. But, um, but when you, when you brought that forward to me, all of it fell in line with me. Like everything made sense all of a sudden, because I was I was really chasing after that gut component for years. The diet, everyone, every practitioner I saw always told me, oh, you need to change your diet around. Let's look exactly what you're eating. Let's look at the supplements you're taking, whatever. Sometimes they've talked about sleep and stuff, 
but they never talked about the using the power of your brain and harnessing that power to fix and heal your body. Yeah. And I think that is such a missing component for most people. Everyone yeah. I talk to, I, I talk about the gut health world. They're always talking about which supplement to take and stuff like that. They're never focusing on, you know, um, regulating their nervous system like that, like you talk about. We're, we're trained to look for the easy way out. Yeah. Easy way out. Yeah. They're always looking for that next quick fix, the next mm-hmm. supplement. The next- I think there's also something to be said for how damaging it can be to to be hyper focusing on your health to be constantly researching to be constantly scouring facebook groups and just all of that just kind of reinforces the pathways of illness and sometimes it's just as simple it can be as simple as just taking your focus away from illness and start focusing on things that make you joyful and just start trusting that your body has an innate ability to heal and i think that's one of the biggest problems with modern medicine is that they don't embrace the fact that our bodies were designed to heal. We we're self healing. And so, yeah, maybe certain supplements or protocols could help people, but the most important part of healing comes from within. That's, that's something I like to say a lot, even though it's cheesy, because I think it's true. Yeah, it's not yeah. TV at all. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. And that's something that we've gotten away from because we think I have to do X, Y, and Z, like fundamentally or like outside of the body externally. What can I do to fix this yeah. instead of asking our own body, what do you need? Or like our, our consciousness will tell us, our intuition will tell us. But yeah. it's kind of like those lizards, you know, you chop off their tail and it will re it will regrow. Like our body is capable of doing so much more than we give it credit for, but we have to be tapping into the right things. And what you were saying about people in chronic illness um, not living or being too defined by their illness, you end up getting to a place where you're just merely existing. Like you're not living anymore and people get stuck in that state for mm. years. Yeah. Seeking, seeking external answers and mm-hmm. seeking external band-aids and external fixes mm-hmm. instead of looking within and promoting that, that internal wellness, which would be the most powerful, but you have to be willing to do the work. And I think that's a big thing in the, in the chronic illness world, the mental illness world, mm-hmm. people are still looking for those band-aids. And when they hear like, oh, I've got to do all of this really exhausting emotional mental work, or it's going to take me a long period of time, everybody gets turned off. Not everybody, but a lot yeah. of people get turned off and they're still chasing those quick fixes. But I found it to be quite remarkable what can happen in somebody's life when they're when they're willing to prioritize themselves and 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 do that internal work because body is capable. We just have to trust it, right? Trust nature. You have your body's way of healing. Exactly. So what about, um, so I know with myself, uh, Rachel, that I was so wrapped up in that identity of being that sick person. You know, Mm -hmm. I was researching, I was on my YouTube channels every single day. I have stacks of books. In fact, I keep and we would it. fight about it all the time when oh I was my a God. coach. And I would be like, he'd be like, every day it was like, I think I have cancer. I think I have this. I think I have that. And I'm like, you yeah. got to just stop. <laughs> my symptoms were so bad that I I was so entrenched in illness that like I didn't even I couldn't even fathom thinking about anything else. Like that was on my mind 24-7. Did that when you started the the brain retrain type stuff um did, was that did that start to unravel for you gradually over time where you're you didn't like you know you weren't so wrapped up in that identity of, of chronic illness yeah and i would say so when i started brain retraining i'd already had seen some significant improvements so i felt like i had that spark of hope already in me where i i was like okay i'm getting better maybe i can get more and more uh improvements from this and i think when I, so when I was given all these diagnoses, di- what is the plural of diagnosis? diagnoses? Diagnoses. <laughs> diagnoses. Yeah, I, that sounds so weird to say. Uh-huh. But anyway, I was given all these diagnoses and my doctors told me I'd be sick for the rest of my life. And the best that they could do was, you know, m- manage symptoms, which obviously that, that they were not doing a good job of managing any of it. 
but I started to accept that, you know, I would be sick for the rest of my life and I would just have to do the best that we could. And that was my way of being positive. But when I let go of that and started to believe that I could truly heal, that I could fully recover, that was also a turning point for me. And in knowing that it, it didn't matter what I was diagnosed with, that I could heal, that my body was capable of healing. And once I sort of had that shift, then I really started to see more and more improvements. And something that I I get a lot of questions about is how do you do that? Like, how do you let go of limiting beliefs when they're so ingrained in you? And something that I like to suggest is just to approach it with curiosity. Say, what if I could get better? Start with that. Like, what if I could get better? What if I could heal? And then eventually that will progress into believing that you can heal and then knowing that you can heal. And so that's kind of how it happened for me. It didn't happen overnight. I wasn't just, I didn't just wake up one morning and say, yep, I'm going to fully recover. It was a gradual thing. Yeah. Just asking yeah. yourself that question and being willing to like, let the question be out there. Yeah. I think all things started a question when you're talking about self-discovery, you know, self-inquiry, like that, those kind of things. Also, you just sit with the question and what's mm -hmm. amazing is your consciousness will eventually allow you to experience the answer. So instead of somebody just saying you can heal and you believing that and saying, okay, I can heal. It allows you to have a knowing within you, like you said, and, and knowing and a conviction that you just know you, you innately know that you'll heal. You're not just believing somebody's idea. Yeah. And the other thing that comes up is, you know, when the doctors tell you that you're just never going to get better, like I've heard that story over and over and over. And it's like, they're giving people death sentences, you know, yeah. or life prison sentences and when you finally get to the place where you know that that's not true, it's like somebody coming in and saying, your sentence has been commuted. You know, there's all these people that have been wrongfully convicted and they've been on death row for 20 years. And then all of a sudden they get let out. And it's just like, like, you can imagine how that feels. It's very similar to this situation when you finally learn that that reality that I thought was true is not true at all. And what is true is this. And I know that it's true because it's not coming from my head. It's coming from a deeper place. I, sometimes people don't like that. I share the message that healing is possible. They say like, not everything can be healed. And, you know, like there are some things that are maybe not super likely, but healing just means that it's, it's possible. And it's yeah. important to believe in that. And the fact that doctors are telling people that they'll just be sick forever, I think is so incredibly damaging. And it, it's just, that's, those, those are the things that keep me up at night. That like, alone can, can severely yeah. damage somebody's psyche. You know, yeah. just, just that, like, even if there was nothing wrong with you and you just had some crazy symptom and you went to the doctor and they're like, oh, it's probably this and you're going to be sick until you die. You would go home and be devastated by that. Like that, a huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your, your core beliefs, they impact your physical reality. Yeah. And so it can be a hard thing to change a core belief. And, and something that I will often share is I heard about brain retraining probably five years before I started it. And a lot of people have a similar story where they first hear about it and think that's, that sounds crazy, or that sounds like a gimmick and don't even look into the science behind it. And then it just takes them a certain amount of exposures to become more interested and actually become open-minded to it. And so I, one of, one of my best tips, I think for people when they go into brain retraining is just go into it with an open mind and be willing to learn something different. You know, one thing I, I find, you know, sometimes I think the best treatment personally, after being sick and so sick for years and years and years, and I'm still not recovered, you know, but I'm, I'm doing a lot better than I was. I think Jen could attest to that, at least to, uh, than I was a year ago. Um, it, but it's slow going, you know, it takes time. Um, nothing happens overnight and it does require a lot of hard work. But I think that this brain retraining stuff is, is so important. That's why we started our own community called Wired for Healing, where we really take a look at, at brain retraining using the power of our brain to heal our bodies. And we really look at a, a lot of different healing modalities. Um, you know, we recently brought Jen on board. So Jen is a new coach and, and partner in the community. 
Um, Jen, maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, coming from, from sort of a, a newbie perspective to this, um, what is your, what, what is your sort of approach to this and, and, uh, your thoughts on, uh, nervous system regulation? Yeah. What we're trying to do is build up an online wellness community where people can start to work on all aspects of healing and learn about all of these things. So we're not just going to be hundred percent focused on diet or hundred percent focused on brain retraining, but we're trying to kind of address all of these things and educate people as well as support people. And so people are coming to us with a variety of different issues. So whether it's chronic illness, whether it's trauma, whether it's mental illness, whether it's psychiatric drug withdrawal, there's a lot of different conditions that are affected by a body that's stuck in that fight, flight, or freeze situation. So our goal is to provide the resources and education for people to start implementing all of these different modalities to help themselves heal in a lasting manner, right? So it's not a quick fix type of deal, but it's something that if you continue working on long-term, then you'll be able to heal those issues from the root. And we've all heard about root cause healing at this point. And so that's kind of our goal is to, to help people dig a little bit deeper and see what things might need to be worked on. But then another big aspect of the community is the support system. So having access to coaches who can provide support, but also the community having the social aspect where they can communicate with each other and they can support each other. They can share stories, not in so much of the, um, you know, listing all your symptoms out, but sharing positive affirmations and gratitude and sharing their joy, their passions. And uh, we even have like a weekly wins class where people kind of talk about the different successes that they've had during the week. So this community is growing and I think it's going to be a really positive one where people can bring whatever they can to the table to kind of really start looking inward for that healing process to start to occur and then also be able to get the support that they need and educate themselves um, on all these different things that are so foreign to so many people right now we want to bring awareness and we want to uh to support people while they go on this journey and something i'm super super pumped for is we're having a retreat in november and rachel's coming Yes. yes, love it. So we're <laughs> right. having this wellness retreat in, in uh, wellness, gut brain health retreat um, will be more sort of animal based. I'm not going to call it a carnivore retreat because that's not what it is, but um, in Tennessee, November 1st to 5th. So Rachel, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. It'll be, we're just super pumped to have you coming on the retreat. I'm, I'm really excited for this. And I, I think there's definitely something to be said about being able to connect with people that's are like-minded that are wanting to optimize their health and that love connecting with nature and prioritize eating nourishing foods. And so, I, I, yeah, I'm just really excited for this. And I think it will be an awesome, awesome experience. And most of all, we're going to have fun and enjoy it and get away from, you know, yeah. leave all of our issues and worries and problems behind yeah. and just have a good time and let loose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, getting one thing that... Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rachel. Sorry, I was just going to say that getting away can be so powerful for healing, having a new change of scenery and yeah, just taking we'll time away from busy of, life and We'll have relaxing. plenty of nature around us too. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. The view from the cabin looks amazing. Oh my God. I want to show you guys some more, some more pictures I did in my last video, but um, you know, one thing that I find amazing is whenever I go away, I don't know if you guys feel this as well. I think this is just a perfect example of a limbic type injury. Um, when I'm away and I could be in the worst wave, I could have the worst symptom flare up for weeks on end. But mm -hmm. when I go away, all of a sudden my symptoms start to get better. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and someone asked me, they're like, you know, because someone else felt this way, they went on a vacation and they came back from the vacation. They're like, man, I wish I could feel like that all the time. I'm like, yes, this is part of the brain retraining process. You can feel like that all the time, yeah. but it takes a bit of work, right? Because when you're at home and your regular everyday life, 
and you have all that, all those stressors, this is where your identity is, or it's all wrapped up in your home, right? When you get out of that, right? When you do that internal work, um, then you're going to experience these, these neuro, these neuroplastic changes, right? That we need to heal. Yeah. We need and to change in order to be able to heal. And that doesn't necessarily mean leaving your home, but it means that you, you do have to change in order to start healing. Yeah. I mean, you can just imagine if somebody's life is centered around their illness all the time, they're yeah. not finding joy. They don't feel useful in life. They don't feel like they have a purpose that's a dreary place to be. So when you go somewhere fun where you're distracted and you're social and you're enjoying things and you're doing activities that bring you joy, of course, you're not even going to want to go back home. But if your home is <laughs> every time you do that, it shuts my screen off. Stop. Sorry. I got to figure out how to, I got to figure out how to fix that. Um, but if you, you know, you cultivate a home that brings you joy and is full of your interests and you look around your house and you find things that you love and you cultivate relationships in your area and build a community like there's so many different ways that you can make your home life more exciting and you know can spark a little bit more joy and positivity then you won't have to be somewhere else distracted in order to enjoy yourself you'll be able to enjoy yourself no matter where you are absolutely absolutely Absolutely. <laughs> and it changes everything. It changes everything in your life when you rediscover yourself like that, right? When you are away from the identity, like I, I feel like being chronically ill has been such a gift for me because now I'm rediscovering life for the first time again. And it's in, in a way that I haven't felt since I was like a teenager. Yeah. It's it's absolutely incredible. I'm, I think Rachel could probably relate to that. Absolutely. It makes everything mean so much more after going through something like that. And so <laughs> I know what you mean. I'm grateful for what I went through too. I'm grateful that I'm not there anymore, but I, it's definitely shaped my life in a way that will impact me forever. And so, yeah. Listen, we could, we could watch guest speakers on here, but most importantly, we could watch Top Gun in the movie room. <laughs> Now, I hate to be promoting watching movies in a movie room, but come on, we got to make use of at least one night. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We have to have a movie night. Yeah. Anyway, um, really, that's it. Did you have any other questions, Jen? No, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm sure it's going to resonate with a lot of people out there that have, you know, gotten to a certain point of healing, maybe, but still haven't found that thing to just quite unlock it for them. So. Hopefully this will inspire some people to make some, some further changes and to keep, I say investigating, but like, you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time researching, but like, this is an avenue that if you do investigate and you do start to implement even a little bit of these things every day, you can make a huge improvement and, and get your, get your feet directed in the right direction. So thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited for the retreat. It's going to be awesome. So Yay. you can join us everyone who's listening absolutely and if you guys want to try out our community wired for healing i'm going to link it in the, in the description below um you could use the code healing me to get 10 percent off but just you could even try it for a free week so if you want to see what it's all about you want to see how we teach you want to see what brain retraining and, and nervous system regulation is all about give it a try for a free week you have absolutely nothing to lose and yeah so really that's it guys thanks so much for joining Check out everything in the description. And uh, thank you, Rachel. I'll also link all your information down below as well. Bye. Bye-bye.